The hunt for the next professional MasterChef champion is back on. And these six chefs all believe they have what it takes to win the title. Now, they face two challenges set by Judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin star Marcus Waring. I think my mum always said, even before I knew what a chef did, I wanted to be one. I'm confident in my cooking and my ability, and I believe I have enough to go far. I'm expecting all these chefs to come in here to put up a good fight. They're here because they want this title. I'm really excited and looking forward to this amazing journey. First test is a skills test. Marcus, what are you going to get them to do? Uh, I'm going to ask the chefs to make an omelette Arnold Bennett. I think this is going to be a tough one. Yep. Ooh. An omelette Arnold Bennett is a haddock omelette with hollandaise sauce and gruyere cheese. And this was a dish that was invented at the Savoy in the early 1900s. Arnold Bennett was a novelist who was a guest at the, at the Savoy Hotel, uh, and he just used a call to the kitchen and asked for a, a flat omelette with some haddock and a glazed cheese top. Do you want to show me? First thing, I'm just going to poach the haddock in milk. No seasoning, just milk. And just put a little cartouche on top. That's just so that any steam coming off the milk can then just cook the little bit of fish that's on the top. All we need for the hollandaise sauce is just the egg yolks. I'm just going to bring them together. We're not going to put any seasoning in here at the moment. Slightly whip them up, get them a, little, a little bit aerated. We've got a pan of water here, this is our bain marie, this is what we're going to cook it on. So you have a change colour, very pale, aerated. Take so clarified butter, and as you start to add the clarified butter, it starts to emulsify and come together as one. There's nothing here so far that the chefs shouldn't know. It's hollandaise and poaching the bit of smoked fish. That's right, you know, they're all skills that our chefs should have. I'm also going to add in the hollandaise reduction, which is going to be the white wine vinegar, black peppercorns, and some dried bay leaves. Otherwise, it'll just be too rich. That's the consistency I'm looking for. Not unlike a good custard. That's it, that's what it looks like. Just check our fish, just touch the fish, and just naturally it just breaks off into its natural flakes. And I've left it on the skin to hold it together. And then just take a fork and just break the flakes away. And you'll know whether the fish is cooked because it'll just come away from the skin. OK? Now I'm just going to whisk up a little bit of cream, which is going to be added to the hollandaise before it goes on top of the omelette. And it will help it glaze under the salamander. Just fold that through. And then a little squeeze of lemon. So now we're going to go to make our omelette. Any idea how many Arnold Bennett's you may have made in your time, Marcus? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, I, when I was at the Savoy when I was 17, I worked on the what they called the potage section, which was the, the, the soups, omelettes, all the egg dishes. So I've made a good few hundreds, if not thousands, of these. Just keep moving the egg. So I'm now just flaking the haddock onto it. Just gently fold that in. Gruyere cheese. Mm. Classically Parmesan. I find Parmesan just probably a little bit strong for me personally. One days. Mm. It's a very rich dish, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Over to the grill. Now this cooks very quickly. There we go. Wow. Omelette, Arnold Bennett. I tell you what, it looks deceptively simple, but it's not, and, it, and its flavours and textures are complex. Three right. key skills is poaching the fish, making the hollandaise, and a good omelette. 
glazed under the grill. Let's see what they can do. Yep, let's get them in. First up is cafe owner Lucy, who started out working for her parents. Most recently when they had their pub, I was the head chef there. It was the closest we've ever worked together as a family. And me and my mum work really well together. And my dad was just not allowed in the kitchen, basically. I would like to use elements of my everyday cooking in the competition. However, I will have to be refining them to produce the quality of food that the judges will be looking for. Hello, Lucy. Welcome to MasterChef. This is a skills test. I would like you to make us an omelette Arnold Bennett. OK. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Um, not exactly, no. You have made an omelette before? Yes, so it's okay. omelette. Hollandaise. Hollandaise, yep. Can do omelette, can do hollandaise. Smoked haddock. Yeah. In the omelette, hollandaise. Okay. Brilliant. I think. So, yeah. Chef's head here on. Here we go. And There's you'll be a lot fine. of people in here, but it's fine. I'm going to give you 20 minutes for this test. OK. Lucy? Yes. Okay. Marcus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm classically trained. Okay. And um, I've worked in lots of different restaurants, hotels, catering companies, and I used to be a private chef. That's what I mainly do. Okay. Yeah. And none of your private clients ever said, do you know what? I really fancy an omelette Arnold Bennett. Um, you know, they didn't. <laughs> I've made lots of omelettes by time, though, so hopefully it will, it will work out. See, you've had five minutes. Thank you. All right, 15 minutes to go. I'm wondering whether I need to poach the haddock. What, what, if you don't, milk. what else will you do with it? Um, I think maybe I'm going to do that then. Ten minutes left. OK. Lucy, you have five minutes left. Are you done? Yes, I'm done. With a couple of minutes spare? Yeah. Well done. How do you think that went, Lucy? Um, not bad. How does Marcus think it went? Mm. Not good. Not good? OK. <laughs> because it's not an omelette Arnold Bennett. OK. That's a frittata. So you've cooked it under the grill rather than actually fully in the pan. Yep. You've attempted a hollandaise. You know, uh, it's one of the quickest I've seen made up. Mm. But <laughs> this is basically the butter folded into the yolks. And it will be quite heavy. Mm. The fish and the cheese is a nice flavour together. That's, that's right. Uh, what I find hard to forgive is, is the hollandaise. It isn't hollandaise, it's just butter. You may have to prove a point in the yeah. next round. I, I, I agree. I think, I think, Lucy, you need to get your chef's head on. Yeah. Because with classical training that you've had, you know how to do this. Yeah. Lucy, thank you very much. Off you go. Thank you. Thank you. That was pretty rough, actually. <laughs> it was um, not something that I wasn't familiar with. It was just, I think, the nerves and the pressure got to me a little bit. Next is 23-year-old Alex, who is a chef de partie in a high-end garden centre restaurant. We do seasonal food based on Italian cooking here. We seek out the best ingredients that we can possibly find. 
a lot of the stuff that needs to be really fresh we grow here so we can actually use them fresh from the garden to the plate. I think professional shaving is a bit of a lifestyle. You have to love it because of the effort and hours you put in. Uh, it's one of them careers that you have to really, really live. OK, Alex, I would like you to make us an omelette Arnold Bennett. OK. Do you know what that is? Uh, I'm not classically trained, but smoked haddock omelette with a bit of cheese. Close. It's a flat omelette with smoked haddock going through it and served with glazed hollandaise sauce. OK. Off you go. No classical training? No. I was in the army. I like, trained there for 12 weeks, and then everything else was on the job. When was the last time you made a hollandaise, Alex? I made one for breakfast a few, few weeks ago. Oh, good. You've had five minutes, Chef. You've got 15 to go. Split. Why do you think that's split, Alex? My eggs weren't quick enough, maybe. Or too quick with the butter, maybe? Maybe. Try again. Go a bit slower. You've got 14 minutes left. You've only got a little bit of butter left in your pan. What are you going to do? Try and get some more of the uh, split hollandaise back in once the emulsification has started. OK. Thinking on your feet, Chef? Trying to do what's asked. Have you, uh... You made many omelettes in your time? No. Enough time, but just. Come on, son. Bring it over here, Alex. There you go, son. You done? Yeah. You happy? I think so. You're still not sure whether you've delivered a nominal Arnold Bennett, are you? No. Well, I can tell you that you have. Mm. I think that's a very, very good job. Jeez. <laughs> well done. I think it's an amazing first attempt for someone who didn't have a clue what it was, you know, and that's what we want to see. Ooh, no, that's nice. Really nice texture. Mm. You have got smoky fish, you've got that tang of cheese, and you've got the acidity and slight sweetness of hollandaise. That's very good. You should be smiling. We're smiling, Alex. Yep. Good job, well done. Off you go. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> nerves of steel, the boy. He's got nerves of steel. <laughs> Great start. After that, I'm feeling a bit confident, but I don't want to be overly, overly confident. I want to still have a few more um, what do they call them? Healthy nerves. The last chef to take on Marcus's skills test is sous chef Tim, who works in a seafood restaurant. Since I was eight years old, I knew for a fact that I want to be a chef. Growing up in the Philippines, I saw my mom and my aunties running their catering business and everything. And then basically from that, I got engaged in the kitchen, helped them out and everything. So it's just become a fascination to me and then become my career right now. I'm a guy with loads of ambition and everything and I want to prove something not for anybody else. I want to prove something for myself. It's the biggest thing that I've ever done in my career. I hope I'm ready for it. Okay. Okay, Tim. I would like you to make us a nominal Arnold Bennett. Okay. Do you know what that is? Um, basically, it's like poached this um, smoked haddock and everything, then put some cheese and stuff. 
So I think pretty much can do it. Yeah. And I'd also like you to make a hollandaise sauce in which you've got to glaze the omelette with. Cool. Try and focus on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what the elements of the dish are. You've got 20 minutes. Off you go. Oh. Oops. The nerve chef. Oh, slow down a bit. Oh. Tim, are you classically trained? Uh, yes, Chef. You are? I've done culinary school back in the Philippines. You've got five minutes left still. <sighs> I want this. I think I've just done a stupid mistake. I'm not happy with it. You know? It's just like really nerves like kicking to me. Like literally just forget the basics. The inside of the omelette is still runny, but that could possibly be because there's a kilo of butter in it. It's a bit of a disaster, really. I agree with Chef. Totally agree. You're just rushing too much, Tim. Tim, thank you. Off you go. What was he thinking? Well, he wasn't thinking, was he? Look at this swamp thing. I, 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 just, I just feel emotional. I'm angry, I'm speechless towards it. Like, this was a really, really silly mistake, what I've done. Marcus, we've seen three chefs attempt your skills test. Monica, your turn. How are you going to test the next three chefs? Today, I would like them to make two different types of brandy snaps. The two classic shapes, the cigar or a basket. But our chefs can make whatever shapes they want and fill it with Chantilly cream. Not easy to make. This is a really interesting challenge. How long have they got? 15 minutes. Right. Show us how it's done. First thing we're going to do is make the mix up. So I've got golden syrup here. And butter and sugar. Butter and some sugar. Our chefs are going to need a bit of elbow grease here today and a lot of whisking. So we also have some flour to go into it. And I'm going to make sort of a dark chocolate one, so in goes cocoa powder. But our chefs can just make a plain ginger one if they want. And it's all about sort of getting that right thickness, because if it's too thick on one side, it won't cook. So there's no brandy in a brandy snap? There's no brandy in the brandy snap, but apparently the name comes from, from the term branded, to burn. Oh. Now it's going in the oven. How long? Roughly about eight minutes. Now I'm going to make chantilly cream. Vanilla, some cream and icing sugar. 
So a classic Chantilly is simply those three ingredients, right? Even though it's just a whipped cream, the skill is the quantity of vanilla, the amount of icing sugar, the passing of the icing sugar, and the texture of the cream. There are th key things in there that we're going to be looking for, or Monica's going to be look looking for. You can look as well. I can look as well. All right, I'll let you. I'm just going to melt a little bit of chocolate. So I'm just splitting my Chantilly in two because I want to make one with chocolate. It's just stirred through. Okay. And it's that simple. Right. So I'm just going to roll this up quickly. If the chefs try and roll it when it's still on the tray, it'll be too hot, it's too soft. You can't apply it, you can't mould it. It needs to come off and cool. This is the chocolate one I'm piping in. So there you have it, very simple brandy snap basket and a chocolate filled cigar. That's a beautiful thing, look at that. I tell you what, the cream is the very easy, easy bit. Everything's about the brandy snap. It's a very thin, crunchy coating, isn't it? Very thin. And the chocolate works beautifully well. It really does. This for me is, is a huge test of control to get the thickness of, of the brandy snaps. It's so important. If they can hold the nerves together, you know, and, and stick to their chef's instincts, mm. they should be fine. First up is 33-year-old Andy, who is a senior sous chef at King's College, Cambridge. We cook for the students on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as the fellows. We also cater for private events, up to 350 people. Uh, it's very busy. The hours are long, the kitchens are hot. Uh, it's very stressful. I'm a single dad, so it adds to the pressure, but I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. I love it. It's, it's the best job in the world. Service, please. Right, Andy? Yeah. A bit nervous. <laughs> Take a deep breath. This is the much feared skills test. Yep. All right, gets easier after this. <laughs> Promise? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> what I would like you to do today is to make two different shapes of brandy snaps. Yep. Fill them with a chantilly of your choice. You worried about that? Yeah. Why? Because I've never made a brandy snap. Oh, so try to stay calm. The ingredients have been weighed out for you. Yeah. OK, that would be a help. It's down to you. Dig deep, take a breath. 20 minutes, off you go. <laughs> I can see your hand shaking, Andy. You all right? Yeah, yeah. You don't do a lot of pastry work at the college? Uh, no, I'm relatively new there, so I'm yet to work my way around the sections. What position are you, Andy? Sous chef. You've had five minutes. Thank you. Feeling a bit better? Uh, no. no. <laughs> You're halfway, Andy. You have ten minutes left. Thank you. What have you got in there at the moment? A bit of a puddly, sugary mess.
Oi, oi. Three minutes to complete your masterpiece. Or taco. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Come on, mate, you're getting there. 60 seconds. You shook that strawberry off the spoon, Andy. <laughs> Are you done? Yep. Yeah. really impressed that you cooked the brandy snap mix off first um, and then cooled it. It was very important to cool that mix and you put it into a bowl. You could have made the mix a bit thinner, especially the one that you made into a taco. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you got a great colour, you're very patient to let it cook and wait for it. So especially being so nervous, you can easily sort of pull the oven out and, and ruin that. Glad they're crunching. Whenever you're putting icing sugar into, into cream or using icing sugar, you should always sieve it first to get, away, to get rid of the, 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 of the lumps. But overall, uh, very good. Uh, you've attempted something you've not done before and you've achieved it. It's about attention to detail, OK? But yeah. good job. The brandy snap itself has got plenty of snap. There's the heat of ginger in there, which acts like a slight irritant, which just for me emphasizes the sweetness. I got hit with a big waft of vanilla. The coolie is lovely, and all that strawberry juice coming over it. That's an absolute delight, Andy. Absolute delight. I wonder what you can do when your hands stop shaking. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Off you go, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. He did really well. Right. He's really nervous, well. but he didn't rush it, did he? With the nerves and stuff, I think they were quite impressed that I managed to get the job done. Next is Lee, who works as a chef de partie in a boutique hotel. I see myself in five to ten years, hopefully head chef, top of the game, maybe even a star. Skills test, it, it does make you feel nervous, but you could throw me anything and I think I'd be able to cope with it. Lee, have you made brandy snaps before? I have, but not for a while. Go on, mate, get amongst it, off you okay. go. You've had five minutes, Lee, so there's 15 to go. Do you like a bigger whisk? <laughs> How long have you been a chef, Lee? Uh, about eight, eight, nine years now, I think. It's been quite a while. You're a veteran, then. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like one at the minute. What are you making, Lee? Just making a quick chocolate sauce to go over the top of the, the fruit. You're halfway, Lee. You've got ten minutes left. They don't look how I remember them to look. Yeah. All done? I think so, yeah. yeah. How 
How was that? I know the brandy snaps aren't right. They're, they're more like twills. Do you know where you went wrong? I'm not sure, no. You didn't put any sugar in the brandy snap mix and that's why it hasn't worked. What happens is, while it's baking, it's caramelising, OK? Yep. And that's missing, hence you do have a twill mix mm. here. The Chantilly cream we've made was a, a nice consistency. It didn't look over whipped. I'm really sorry, I'm struggling to find anything positive. I, I really am, apart from the, the, the Chantilly and, and the berries. And the chocolate's burnt. Your face looks very disappointed. Yeah, I am. I am disappointed. I, I knew they weren't right when they come out of the oven. Lee, thank you very much for your efforts. We'll see you again soon. Off you go. Thank you. Thank you. He's just shaking, trying to keep it all together. It is hard, but hopefully that's the only slip up I'll have. Finally, it's 26 year old sous chef Nick, who has spent six years working in Michelin starred kitchens. My first job was uh, just washing up at a pub in the countryside. Um, I got a bit of a bug for it and uh, decided to go to Catering College. I'm not a finished product at all, but I like to think I have a certain amount of creativity and I can be quite creative under pressure. I deliver good, good food, perfectly seasoned hopefully, and I think that'll be, that'll be enough in the early stages at least. You look relatively relaxed. A lot of chefs get quite stressed out at this bit. Uh, I see a bit of fruit pastry work, so... I'm in the pastry at the moment at my place, so... Hey. It could be worse. <laughs> that's, that's music to my ears. Off you go, chef. Thank you. Five minutes have gone, Nick. OK. 15 minutes left. How long are you cooking for, Nick? Um, I'm going to give him about four minutes until I think I'll be able to be pliable enough to hold in the mould. OK. Nick, you are halfway, which means you have ten minutes left. Six minutes left. Thank you. You done, chef? I'm done. Thank you. Oh my gosh, Nick, pastry chef. You know, you've come here, you've given it a great go. You've also attempted a, a chocolate sauce. You know, lovely of the swipe to hold it. You know, it's a bit of thought and care into your presentation. There are some really lovely flavours on there, vanilla and fruit that you slightly cook now. Nick, I'm really impressed. I think your working methods were excellent. The way you approached the job was very professional. I like your work. I think you've had a very, very good round. Off you go. Thank you. Come on, he's a good chef. He's a good chef. Now the first test is over, I just, uh, yeah, just want to carry on, really, and just get stuck into it. 
tell you what, I'm, I'm not normally given to great optimism, but I think this went pretty well. I think most of them have put up a good dish, some better than others, uh, and it really does show what type of cook we've got in front of us. I've got some idea of how they work now, but they're going to be more relaxed the next time we see them. It's their dishes, it's their choice of recipe, so they should know it. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're doing. Chefs, this is your opportunity to show us your signature dish. It should be practiced, it should have been rehearsed, and it will be perfect. Make sure it's a good one, because at the end of it, three of you are going to be going home. One hour and 15 minutes, off you go. It's hard to know where you stand after the skills test. Today I want to prove that I can hack it, I can do it, I can work under pressure, I can just do what I do every day of the week really. Andy, this is your signature dish, what is it? Duck breast with some uh, Chinese five spice, um, some spiced peanuts, some broccoli puree, and then there's um, a sauce with honey and soy to go with it. Tell me why this is your signature dish. Well, I've visited um, Malaysia, Singapore, and I just love the whole excitement, the, the sourness, the, the spiciness, the whole range of flavours that it can bring. And I think this is a dish that I can hopefully nail. Andy's dish has been influenced by his travels throughout Asia, but travelling and enjoying food doesn't give you the expertise to be able to carry it through. He needs to make sure that the flavour of the duck comes through. He cannot lose that flavour through all those other big ingredients. The last test was just really... I was really, really disappointed with it. I need to control my nerves, basically. So what are you doing for us? Um, basically, it, the, the dish called um, Ginataang is that. Okay. With aubergine oh, yeah. salsa. Ginataang esta. Ginataang. Ginataang. Isda. Isda. Yeah. Ginataang yeah. esta. Yeah. And so, what, what, how does that translate? Um, basically, it's um, fish in coconut sauce. Fish in a coconut sauce. Mm -hmm. So, is this a, a classic Filipino dish that you're doing? Uh, the flavors are very classic, but I mm -hmm. kind of break it down a little bit because Filipino food is more on like a one pot wonder, everything served with rice, and I want to take away that. I want it to be a bit more. More if I'm more contemporary. Absolutely. Okay. I mm. like the selection of ingredients you got here, but tell me, have you got enough ginger? Um, I wish I can have more. <laughs> <laughs> it's his signature dish. It's a dish from where he's from. I'm expecting him to come together and deliver a really, really tasty Filipino dish. You've had 20 minutes already. I want to show the judges with my signature dish that I can prepare savoury food as well as I can prepare pastry. And um, just that I can cook. I just want to, you know, show them I can cook and I'm a controlled, calm individual. I'm doing a pork fillet, which I'm going to just roast in a pan with some sage butter. Uh, I'm doing a set polenta, a pine nut crumble, and a sherry and creme fraiche sauce. Every element of the dish is something I've taken and worked on and practiced. You're an ambitious chef, Nick. Yeah, I think any serious chef's got to have ambition. Nick is, is using the polenta in a, in a sort of different fashion. He's going to make a pine nut crust and use it as a crumble, as, as, as a topping of this. So I'm really interested to, to try this. You are halfway. Halfway. I think the judges think I'm a young lad, enthusiastic, and. Hopefully I can show them that I can cook. Alex is, is making us a pigeon dish, which he's going to glaze with a pomegranate molasses. He's going to serve it with a cauliflower tabbouleh style salad. He's making a pastilla with the legs, so he's going to be comfying the legs down, and then he's going to be rolling them in pastry. 
There's not a lot of meat on a wood pigeon, to be really honest with you. And I think he needs to be very careful with the pomegranate molasses that it doesn't overpower what is considered to be quite a delicate flavor. Why the North African style? Um, when I was growing up, I used to eat a lot of Middle Eastern food. So I grew up with spices being a seasoning to your food. Um, and Where did you grow up? Where did you grow up? In Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jewish, so we used to eat a lot of like shawarma, and so I grew up with quite a bit of spices. I really like eating this food, so I thought I'd cook it for you today and see if you like it too. Twenty minutes left. Just twenty minutes. Come on. I hope the judges see what I want them to see because there, there is a lot more to me than a blip in pastry. It's not my strong point. My strong point is creating dishes and cooking dishes that I know I can do. Lee, what is your signature dish? It's a can of lamb, Jersey crushed potatoes, BPRA raw beans, asparagus, and a bit of treat, so it's my favourite dish, this is. What have you got to do to make sure you go through? I've got to nail every component of my dish and hope the other contestants slip up. What I want to see from Lee is some great cooking and these wonderful ingredients cooked to their best. Guys, last 15 minutes. Lucy, are you happy you left the omelette behind? Yes, definitely. That Why? was a bad round for me. I was definitely out of my comfort zone. What do we need to do now? Um, probably a lot. Yeah. It's a dessert so, you're doing, isn't it? Yes. It's something that I do at work quite a lot, but obviously refine it for MasterChef. Uh, chili chocolate and beetroot brownie. We have chocolate soil, sweet pickled baby beetroots and beetroot meringues. You ever had a brownie with, with pickled vegetables? No, <laughs> I have not had a brownie with pickled vegetables before, Greg. Neither have I. No. So it's a first. That's good. Is it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I've practiced this dish a lot of times, so it's really well rehearsed. I've got a really strict schedule that I'm keeping to, to make sure that it's all done in time and it's all done perfectly. It sounds very interesting. It's got my mind racing. Can it work? Does it work? Will it work? Lucy's very confident at the moment and believes in this dish, so I hope for her sake, it works. Three minutes, come on! What? Well, make me nervous. <laughs> Ninety seconds left. That's it, stop. Time's up. That was like the quickest hour and 15 minutes of my life. <laughs> right, Andy, should we have a look at your food, please? To stay in the competition, Andy has made pan-fried duck breast coated in Chinese five spice, served with chili peanuts, broccoli shavings and puree, wild garlic, coriander yogurt, and a honey soy jus. It's a very nice looking plate of food. Nice presentation, good colors. Very good. Thank you. The duck breast that I've had was nice and pink. Um, a little bit crispy on the on the skin, and then just a hint of those spices. It's not overpowering at all. The peanuts for me, just as you're eating it, I'm, I was thinking, where, where's the spice in here? But then it slowly starts to, to come through. But it's not overpowering, it's actually very pleasant. I like the duck with the soy saltiness, I really like that. However, a broccoli puree is a very European flavour in, in, in an otherwise very, very Asian dish. I like the fact you've not tried to get the broccoli puree smooth, you've kept it quite textured, I quite like that. I think the sauce packs big flavour, it's bold, it slaps you around the face, it's great. This dish works for me, I thoroughly enjoyed it. 
Well done. I did my best and we'll see how it goes. Nick, your turn, please, sir. Nick's dish is pork fillet served with discs of Parmesan polenta, topped with a pine nut crumble crust, accompanied by asparagus, crispy nettles, pine nut puree, and a sherry creme fraiche sauce. Ah, oh, this is lovely. It's elegant and refined without being fussy. Nick, one of the hardest things about pork, especially a pork fillet, is what you put with it on the basis that it's such a delicate piece of meat. And I think that what you've done here is you've complemented the meat very, very well and the ingredients all work together. And the, the meat is beautifully cooked as well. I'm glad you've kept it pink. The polenta still retains its softness, even though you've fried it and gratinated with the, the crumble. I love the crispy nettles as well. The sauce for me is very rich. It's lovely though. You've got the sherry coming through. Smart dish, smart guy. You have delivered to me some wonderful flavours of Italy in a texture that I've never had them in before. And I find it really brilliantly clever and completely delicious. I'm absolutely chuffed to bits. It couldn't have gone any better. Tim's steamed turbot has been served on a banana leaf with aubergine and tomato salsa, crumbed mussels, and a coconut sauce. Mm. I think the salsa is nice and light and refreshing underneath the fish. The fish, beautifully well steamed. The, the mussels are good as well. They're very nice. They're not overcooked. Nice little crunch to them. I think the sauce is divine. I can actually see that, all of that being poured into there and just eat the lot. And it's one of those dishes that you would clean up. The fish for me, is the only bit that lets me down because the bit that I had, I find it's just slightly over. But is it delicious? Yes, it is. I don't understand the sauce going on top of the salsa. For me, it muddies everything in my palate. This dish, I'm not convinced <clears throat> by. I think they might beat me up afterwards because they disagree with me completely. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Indeed. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Having two out of three judges actually agree on what I'm actually trying to put forward, it's actually a big win for me. Lee's cannon of lamb has been served with crushed Jersey Royals. Chorizo, asparagus, broad beans, heritage carrots, pea puree, and a chicken stock emulsion. The lamb isn't very well cooked at all. There's no fat around it at all. And, and the, the emulsion, well, it, it's not an emulsion. An emulsion is when the stock comes together with, with some fat or with some butter or something. And it has a little bit of body, a little bit of something about it, some flavor. And that really doesn't have anything. This is missing a lot, Lee. What I've learned from these guys and being with them is the effort that they take to enhance flavour. It's like their holy grail. And there's so much of this that doesn't deliver that top end flavour. The potatoes without seasoning, without butter. The puree that's a viv lovely vivid colour, but again, no big flavour. The sauce doesn't smash you. You had a point to prove on this round. You really had to come in here, guns blazing and ready to blow us away with a great plate of food but it seems like you've given up. I played it safe. Turned out not to be the best idea on the day. Alex's wood pigeon breast has been coated in a pomegranate molasses glaze and served with a pastilla made from the legs, accompanied by cauliflower tomato and spring onion tabbouleh, charred apricots, and toasted almonds. I absolutely love the pomegranates, the apricot, the lemon juice that's running through there. I even like the little ice cream cone pastilla. You have captured, in my opinion, 
the flavours of the Middle East. There's a, a lot of great things on, on this plate of food. I love the idea of the pastilla and the spices that are coming through that. Um, that works with the pigeon, uh, possibly maybe for me less of the tabbouleh then, so it's not so overpowering on this dish. The tabbouleh is very, very strong and acidic. It doesn't come together and the flavours don't work because I can't taste the main event, which is the pigeon. I think the tabbouleh may have been a bit too acidic for the delicate pigeon, but I think I like the dish. I think it's a great one, but that's just me. Finally, it's Lucy, whose quarterfinal place rests on her chilli chocolate and beetroot brownie, served with blackberries, blackberry coulis, pickled baby beetroots, beetroot meringue, chocolate soil, Greek yoghurt and edible violas. There are well-tested flavours, sweet flavours of chocolate and the beetroot. However, I find the brownie a little dense. This brownie is not great and I don't get that chilli note from it. The meringue is, 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 is nice, but the, the little baby beetroots on the plate, when you eat that baby beetroot with that cake, that is not a nice flavour at all. It does not work. That was quite stressful. All in all, just not a great day at the office, I don't think. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. We have to make a decision now because three of you are going through to a quarterfinal. Three of you, unfortunately, are leaving us. Off you go, thank you. Some good cooking here today from, from our chefs. And you know what? It makes my day if I can find one chef that does great. What is quite obvious is that Nick is a quality chef. He's mm. strong in the pastry and he's strong in the main kitchen. I think Nick is sailed through. Without a doubt. Who was your next favourite? Andy, for me, was, was the next chef that did well today. Mm. Didn't quite agree with you guys on the puree, but we all liked his dish. I think Andy's had two good rounds. Andy and Nick definitely deserve to go through. Yeah, I think that's obvious. I agree. We have to lose three of these chefs. Mm -hmm. And we know, I think, who two of them are. I have Lucy. For me, if you can't make a brownie at this level, we have some serious yeah. issues. Yeah. And Lee with the, the watery lamb dish. Agreed. Agreed. There was just no love in Lee's food today. This is where I think we now may disagree because we have to decide between Tim or Alex. First of all, you've got to look at Alex and say that Alex cooked the best skill test today out of all six. That we have to take into account. His signature dish wasn't quite hitting the mark for me in various different areas and slightly lost and confused. But I did like the tabbouleh that he made. The chef, I believe, has mm. some great fundamental skill. Hopefully I've done enough to Stay in the competition, we're getting slashed by 50%, which is quite high. Now, Tim had a bit of a meltdown with the omelette Arnold Bennett. You're being polite, Greg. Yeah, that was, was a disaster. It was a disaster. However, you two both liked his dish inspired from his home country of the yes. Philippines. At the end of the day, this is what I signed up for. I didn't sign up for it to go home right away, but whatever, whatever happens, it's all in God's will. The question is, who can withstand what's coming around the corner? Hmm. I think we all know who should go through. Three of you are going through to a quarter-final. Three of you are going home. That's the competition. The first chef that is leaving us today is... Lee. The second chef that is leaving us today is... Lucy.
And our third chef that we're losing today is... Tim. You know, at the end of the day, at least I've tried. I did try. I think that it was fair judging. It's just a shame that it wasn't good enough. It's disappointing, but there are other great chefs in there that were better than me on the day. Congratulations, all three of you. You are Master Chef quarter finalists. Well done. Surprise, glad I got through. I think it was quite a close call, yeah. It's been draining, it's been exciting, but you wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. I'm really, really chuffed to bits. It's been amazing, and I just want it to last as long as I can. Next time, it's the quarter final. And the chefs must prove themselves to Marcus and Monica. It's delicious. Only the best of them will get to cook for the critics. It's one of those, are we going to clear the plate moments? Mm -hmm. What can one say? You know, snooze-a-rama. <laughs>